Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at how we can save streaming video to a file, to a movie file on your hard drive. And you can see here uh, what we've done in previous videos. We've shown you how to grab streaming real live video, which you see here. And I'm using a smartphone. You can use a webcam. I've got a smartphone over Wi-Fi. We showed in previous videos how to capture that over Wi-Fi on your computer in the C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application and display it in real time, as you can see here. And we've also talked about how to process that, how to use your GPU to process images, um, a lot of different aspects of um, capturing video and images and doing processing. And uh, we also showed you how to use a library called EMGUCV, which uh, allows us in C Sharp to access the very popular OpenCV AI image processing libraries. So we're going to take the next step here and we're going to develop this very, very simple application, very similar to what we did before, but we're going to add the ability to save a movie file of what you see in the streaming video. And the way this is going to work, um, you just hit the start button and once you hit the start button, it will start saving all of the streaming incoming video and then when you hit the stop button, it will save that to a file on disk. So very straightforward. We'll show you how to do that. We've also got a text box here that's going to give us some feedback on what uh, what are called backends are available in our EMGU CV and an exit button. So a very simple application, show you how to do what's called video writing, writing streaming video to a video file. So let's take a look at our C-Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application, see how we can do it. So here we are in C-Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms .NET Framework application. We've, we've shown you how to get to this point previously in multiple videos. Uh, if you've never done C-Sharp programming, I've got a C-Sharp video series for beginners showing you how to write your very first C-Sharp application. I encourage you to take a look. Here we've got a very simple form and we've added, as we've done before, a picture box. And we've also got three buttons that you can just drag and drop from the toolbox onto here and we've got one text box. So I'll assume you know how to add the buttons and then double click on each one to get the event handlers. And we've got a text box and our picture box set to uh, zoom mode. So we showed you how to do that previously. So very simple. Uh, let's get into the code and see how to do it. So the first thing we're going to have to add emgu.cv. So we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. And you can see as before, we've got three packages installed from EMGU Corporation. Very important, you get the right packages from EMGU Corporation. So we've got emgu.cv, emgu.cv.bitmap, and then emgu.cv.runtime.windows. Now previously, uh, in some of the videos where we used our GPU, we installed emgu.cv.runtime.windows.cuda to access the NVIDIA CUDA GPU. We can't use that in this. We need to have the emgu.cv.runtime.windows. So make sure you've got these three packages installed. So once we've got those installed, again, as we mentioned before, you can't use the any CPU mode. You've got to go to x64, which means you're going to have to configure this. We showed you how to do that previously. Very simple, but it has to be on x64. Once we've got that, we do four using statements using emgu.cv, using system, system.drawing, and system.windows.forms. Very straightforward. So here I've got my application set up like I usually do with regions. I've got the documentation, some parameters, our form one where we've got some methods we're going to uh, run when we initialize the application. We've got some methods and event handlers. So now as we said, when we run this application, it's automatically going to go out and start streaming the video to our picture box. We didn't do that previously before we had a button to start it. In this case, when we do our form one, it's going to do the standard initialize component, but it's going to initialize some variables. We got some methods down here, initialize variables, subscribe the button events, and then start the video feed. So it's automatically going to do that. And the only buttons we have are to start and stop the saving of that video. 
So here's our application. We've got some docs. Uh, briefly, it's again, it's very important that you install emgu.cv.runtime.windows from NuGet. This will not work if you have only emgu.cv.runtime.windows.cuda installed. So make sure you've got that runtime.windows installed. This app grabs streaming video from a webcam or in our case, a smartphone over Wi-Fi as a sequence of EMGUCV mat arrays. And the user can save the video to a file using a specified codec. In this one, we're going to use what's called MP4V. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, this is one area specifying the codec can be a bit of a challenge. You may have to do some trial and error, but we're gonna use MP4V. Typically, the mat array is a byte array. In our case, our camera gives it to us as 480 by 640 by 3. So it's got R, G, and B, which is why there's a 3, with R, G, and B values from 0 to 255. When the user presses the start button, it starts saving and compressing the video frames. And when the user presses the stop button, it saves the video to disk using what's called the dispose method. So it's important you understand that you don't actually save it to disk until you hit the stop button and it saves up all that recorded video and actually in the dispose it sends it to the file on the disk. Now to save the image sequence or arrays to file as a video, you use the emgu.cv video writer class. Before we were using a video capture class to capture the video, here we're going to use video writer which requires that you tell it the following. You need to have the name of the saved video file, what compression codec you're going to use. We're going to use MP4V, how many frames per second, what are the image dimensions, and whether it's a color image or not. So we're going to make sure when we call this video writer, we've got to have all this data. Now you can omit the compression codec, in which case it won't compress the frames or you can specify an integer describing a 4CC codec. And we'll talk about that. Uh, here we're defaulting again to the MP4V. Now it's very, very important. The codec you specify must be supported by your system and EMGU-CV. It might get into a bit of trial and error to find out what is actually gonna work on your system. So we'll show that in a bit. So that's basically what this does. Um, we're gonna start out with some parameters. Um, as before, we've got a public video capture class, and we're going to call it capture. We're adding this video writer class. We're going to call it video writer. Um, we've got a device ID. You've got to tell the capture device which device, if you've got multiple cameras or webcams. Um, yours is probably going to default to ID 0, and if you've got one camera, that's fine. I've got two, so I'm going to use ID 1. Um, also, a bool, if we are recording or not, when we press the start button, we're going to set that to true. Um, we're going to have two integers, video width and height in pixels, like 640 by 480, or in our case, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. Um, we're also going to define a system.drawing.size. We're going to call it large frame size, as we did before, a new size that is 1920 by 1080. So we can take a smaller image coming from the camera and resize it to put it into our picture box. And here we're going to do something we talked about previously. We are going to, when we save the video, we're going to give it a file name that includes the date and time that it was saved. Now there's multiple ways to do this. We talked in a previous video about how to um, format a file name that has the date and time in it. Here we're going to define a public static string file name and use string.format. I generally don't like to use that because it's a little bit, um, you got to remember what the formatting is, but string.format, zero colon, month, day, underscore, hour, minute, seconds, and time. And that is going to be the time part and then dot AVI. So this file name is going to be the name of the file and we're going to use the date time now to fill out all of this data. And then we're going to specify a path, which is, in my case, D documents saved videos, colon, and then append the file name to that. So that's the path that we're going to save it to. So we've got these two strings defining how we're going to name the file and where we're going to save it. Now, the rest of this is basically my showing uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six codecs 
that we might be able to use. And there's a whole lot more you can use, but these are six codecs that I've tried. Some of them work on my system, some of them don't. The first three seem to work okay. Uh, if we say um, the videowriter.4cc, and that tells the video writer what codec to use. And the format is MP4V, and that's the one we're going to use. And that method, the 4cc method, returns an integer defining the codec. Now you could also try MJPG, and that will give you a different integer, uh, or XI, XVID. Those seem to work. Um, now, codec number four I've got here is IYUV. That doesn't seem to generate a thumbnail when you've generated the file. Um, there's no associated thumbnail, at least on my system, so I don't use that. And then um, specifying the follow, following codecs results in a failure to create a video writer. Um, in, our case, in my case, AVC1, even though it's specified as a um, backend, an available backend, it doesn't seem to be recognized as a video writer. So again, you got to try them and see which ones work. Also with H264, uh, doesn't seem to work unless you specify a MSMF backend. So this can get kind of complicated, but um, you can try some of these and see which works. So that's all the parameters. Now we've got the initialized component, and then as we start this up again, we're going to start the streaming video. And the first thing we're going to do is run a method called initialize variables. So let's look at the method, initialize variables. And we are going to instantiate our new video capture device with that device ID. In our case, it's one. In yours, it'll probably be zero. We're going to, since we haven't hit the start button yet, we're going to say recording equals false. Then we're going to define our video width and height as 1920 by 1080 so that we can rescale it to that dimensions. And then, as we showed in the text box, we're going to print out the available video writer backends. And the way we do that is we do an emgu.cv cv invoke, which invokes the OpenCV function called writer backends. And that returns an array of backends. And we're going to call it backends. And it's just an array, as you see here, of backends. And then we're going to step through for each backend in that array, and we're going to call each backend BE. And all we're going to do is append that name, the BE.name, to that text box so that we can see what are the available backends. So we've initialized the variables. Next thing, we're going to subscribe our start and stop button to the applicable uh, event handlers. So subscribe button events, we're just going to subscribe the start recording button and the stop recording button, those two buttons. We're going to subscribe our event handlers that we're going to see down here to those button click events. Very simple. And then the last thing is we're going to start the video feed. Again, we haven't hit the start button yet. We're just initializing and running the application. So we're going to do a capture.start. And then we're going to subscribe our capture image grabbed event handler. We'll see down here to the video capture image grabbed event. And we've talked about that previously. So basically, once we go through this, we have now initialized the streaming video and we're displaying it. So that's all the methods and all that's left is the event handlers. Before we hit the start recording button, the capture image grabbed event, which we've talked about before, We've got a mat called frame, and that's what's coming from the camera. And then the resize frame, we're just taking this and resizing it. We're doing a capture retrieve. Again, the image has already been grabbed, so all we have to do is retrieve it. And we're going to put it in this frame. And then we're going to do a CV invoke resize from frame to resized frame. That's the larger version. And we're going to use this... Um, large frame size that we defined previously. And then once we've got that resized frame, we're just going to say video picture box, which is the name of this picture box, the name I gave to this picture box. Video picture box dot image is resized frame to bitmap. We've done this before, pretty straightforward. So here we're just grabbing the frame and putting it in the picture box. And now we're saying for each captured frame, if the recording Boolean is true, which means we have pressed the start recording button and the video writer is not equal to null, then we're going to actually 
start writing the video so that later on when we stop, we can save it to disk. So we're going to do videowriter.write and we're going to send that resized frame. And that's basically going to store all the video we want to record. And then later on, we're going to actually save it to disk. So that is what happens for each image. The start recording button is what initiates that. So we set recording equals true, which we're checking here if recording equals true. In the text box one append text, we're going to say, hey, we're saving video to whatever path we defined previously. And then we're going to initialize a new video writer. And this is where we have to add all of the information to tell the video, video writer what path we want, what codec, what frames per second, um, and what size and true is going to define if it is a color image. So again, we define the path, we define the codec. Again, that's an integer that we used previously, the number of frames per second, and this new size system drawing dot size with a video width and height and true because it's color. So that's going to start the recording. It's not going to save it to disk. It's going to start the recording, and start saving it. And then when we go to the stop recording button, it's going to say, OK, recording equals false. And if the video writer is not equal null, it's actually going to save it to disk. So this video writer dot dispose doesn't sound like it saves it to disk, but it actually does. This is what actually saves it to disk. So video writer dot dispose and it saves to disk. So that's how you can send a recording of the video to a hard drive. And then the last thing we got is button exit, application exit. So that's about it. Really pretty straightforward to have the user specify when he wants to save the video to a file. So that's about it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that you're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.